Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. Today's Rare Whiskey Friday. We're going to go through and give first impressions on a handful of different whiskeys here. Uh, we don't necessarily mean large brands. Sometimes we do. More often than not, these are going to be your smaller craft distilleries without a tremendous amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a location where you can get your hands on one of these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review and thank you to the magnificent bastards that sent the whiskey. All right, back in 2018, we reviewed this whiskey, so I'm not going to open it and drink it, yeah. but I wanted to acknowledge the benevolent bastard that sent it in, which was Terrence Englert. I don't know what's happening. Benevolent bastarding. Whoops. It's a duplicate. I know. Did we have a good run-up to that, though? The benevolent bastard? We got a... Does it, is it solid and formal or frivolous and fun? It's good. That's the only criteria. It's ah. good. I want, a heart, I want to hold a heart and call them the benevolent bastards. <laughs> That's a pretty good heart shape. Look at that. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't know. I'm just going to sit here and let Dan, the editor. Come you know. up with a good benevolent bastard intro. No, but we, got, we already did. He did like the animation. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we got to have her run up to the animation. That's true. Right. So, so Terrence. Just, just, no, just wait. Okay. Just wait for the spirit to inspire you. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize I was willing to sit here for hours. Oh, I know. For hours. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to say Terrence no. Englert is a bastard. Make it good. Of benevolence. Fine. Here you go. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Okay, we're gonna start with Black Butt Whiskey. It's actually Black Butte Whiskey, but it's not as sexy. That's a... Need some help? There we go. That's an oversized cork for the bottle. There we go. Look at that, watch this. The pressure on this cork is amazing. It's gonna be like a champagne cork. That's serious. Okay, so uh, this is, is a gift. Uh, Black Butte, is that Utah? It is uh, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Okay. So this is a compilation. This is also, by the way, a gift from William Davilar. William Davilar, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> so this is a compilation between Oh. Crater Lake Spirits and Deschutes Brewery There's like in a, Oregon. You know what this reminds me of? Hmm. The reasons why I like Wyoming whiskey. Oh, yeah. Uh, that eucalyptus rich, dark yeah. note. Yeah. yeah. So this is their Black Butte Porter okay. from Deschutes Brewery. Okay. Uh, brewed minus the hops. Of course. And then distilled and aged. Okay. Yeah, I like that. It, it's like, um, it's bright and fresh but not in like a young shiny ethanol way right and just like a clean this is three years old wow this that... is you know what i like about this yeah is that it's not a you know i like beer finished things yeah but you know that's an easy one like hey we'll put yeah. your beer we'll bring it back whiskey in it yeah you, know, you can do a quick three six month turnaround on that just keep the hops out You're for good. them to say look we're going to actually distill your beer Minus the hops. Yeah. And then we're going to sit on it until just as long as you would any whiskey you cared about. Yeah, yeah. That's a real commitment to time right there. Three years. Well, it's not a ton of time, but it is for a beer whiskey partnership. I think it's the it's actually coming through. It, it turned into a really nice, we're still on the nose. It's soft. So far, I'm very much looking forward to getting in here. So Me far, too. really nice nose. Yeah, all the notes in here feel soft and rounded. Yeah, but not thin and weak. Nope. Yeah. Oh, I get that there's, little weird hint of beer. bitterness in there. There's the beer. Yeah. You get that? It's like yeah. a beer finish. There's got to be a... It's like a dark creaminess. It is, and it's slightly creaminess. bitter. It's like um, a dark, almost bitter, sugared... They sprinkled some sugar on this dark, beery malt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I kind of, I'm not normally a fan of these things, but I kind of like this one. Yeah, but in, in the fact that there is beer involved, I can tell, but, you know, I think it's, 
definitely complements the whiskey well, which doesn't always happen. Mm hmm Ah, oh, I like that. Okay, I got nothing else to say other than all the tasting. That's a lot of good tasting notes. Well, and I don't know how easy it is to get this anymore. You know what? So I, thank you, William. If you like the beer mm -hmm. that was the beginning of this process, I think you're probably really going to like that whiskey too. I agree. If you're, you know, you're not going to get overwhelmed by the proof. If you have acclimated to higher whiskey-ish proofs before, the mm -hmm. flavors coming out of this thing, very beer nerd friendly, but yeah. still enough of that whiskey character for the whiskey drinkers to enjoy it. But it's different. It's unique too. That combination, it comes together in a way that I don't think it's surprising. Because I'm, I'm clearly picking out what, bre what the beer is bringing to the table. I'm clearly picking out what the whiskey is bringing to the table. But the execution, mm -hmm. it's nicely balanced. It's, it's well done. And it turned into something that I think is worth the time they put into it. Yeah, I, like I agree. You, I like how unique that is. Uniqueness doesn't always lead to just, you know, nice, delicious, enjoyable, you know, neat pours in a glass. This one did. I like it. Did. It. Yeah. Well done, guys. All right, this one, we're moving now on to Australia. This is from Grace Whitaker. Grace Whitaker, you magnificent bastard. I'm telling you, man, Australia. Yeah, they're, they're bringing home the. Is turning into a hotbed of they're doing, whiskey. They're doing interesting things. And they are sure. doubling down on malt. Yeah. Just everything I get from Australia is somebody doubling down on malt whiskey. I wonder why. You know what? what? And I'm talking completely out of my ass here. What often happens in scenes that are very young like that, you usually have very, very few, just maybe less than a handful. You know, those mm -hmm. three, four, maybe five people that are very influential, that have very strong preferences. And everything heads that direction. And, you know, they're in the discussions that they're in. They're very um, uh, engaged with everybody else. And they're steering that scene in a way that uh, is in line with their preferences. Yeah, but keep in mind, this is closer. I mean, Australia is still, you know, more connected to the malt whiskeys of Scotland How or so? the pot still of Ireland historically because of you know, the empire and uh, original settlements and, and people coming in from England and Ireland right. and all of that, right? So, and so their history ties back to the early days of whiskey. Okay. It's more reasonable for them to get into malts than to get into like grain spirits or things like that so from you, American whiskey. you're whiskeys. attributing it to historical context. Mm -hmm. I'm attributing it to what I've seen time and time again whenever there is a scene in any industry, any space, any niche, whenever you have it, uh, whenever it's young and you have just it just takes strong one or, personalities one or two influential people strong personalities they can absolutely create a trajectory that has impact for decades to come yeah and i think that's i would possible. be the reason why i asked that is because i'm hopeful that there are a handful of those people in the australian whiskey scene because i would love to know who they are yeah yeah well and i'd love to see them start trying to do things like create some rise you know why rye specifically? Because I'm interested as to what rye does in the climate of, Aus of various parts of Australia. Okay. All right. Anyway, just yeah. curious. Um, this, this man, there's... Um, so this is 23rd Street Distillery. It's a single malt whiskey. It's... Uh, there's some type of candy on that. It's aged in ex-bourbon barrels, which is very Scottish. Yeah. Right? Pot still. What and they this? sourced all the grain from Queens, southern Queensland. There's, there's like a really nice aromatic candy. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know what? It, it's like... Yeah, um, I get that. Like the, the craft small handmade candy shops. Yeah. Right? Taffy. Yeah. Where they're doing like hand-pulled taffy shows. Oh, you remember in, in, yeah. And, um, you remember... Uh, you ever go to Galveston? To that one candy shop where they like every three hours... Oh, do the a, Galveston. The yeah. guy has a head mic and he shows you how to yeah, do yeah. the taffy thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that Galveston or Corpus Christi? It's Galveston. It's Galveston? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Totally some taffy notes in there. Ooh, I kind of like that. It's a little sweet for my taste. It's, it's fruity. But yeah. it's got no faults and no funk and no overly young. It's a sugary fruit. It's just, su yeah, it's super rich sugar and fruit. I think if you like uh, the Highland Speyside region, region of Scotland. Oh, yeah. This is going to be right down home plate for you. Mm -hmm. What's the proof? It's got to be in the 40s. Where the hell is the... 
I've got to find it first. 43%. Yeah. In tiny, tiny, tiny print. Mm hmm. And All I'm right, still, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hold on to that one. There's a candy vibe going on, but there's like a fruity character that shows up on the taste, which is really nice, but that sugar never really subsides. Hold on to that one and keep track of it. Okay. Uh, because we got another gift from patron saint Greg Vangsness. Greg Vangsness, you patron saint of whiskey. Mine has whiskey, our tone differences are pretty dramatic now. Okay, so another koala. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Thanks for the koala. Thank you so much. It's a lot of koalas, man. We, yeah, we've got a lot, a lot of koala keychains <laughs> now, if anyone wants one. Um, this is a new make, Yeah. but it's a new make from Australia. He's an Australian lad. Yeah, well, he's, I don't know that he is. He's, he's extremely generous. He's, he has to be. But the whiskeys he sent me are coming from everywhere. Oh, I don't know, the, the Australia thickness is for real when it comes to the Greg. This is uh, Archie Rose Distilling Company, which is only six something-ish years old, under 10 years old. That's a funky new make. Ah, oh, uh, this is way more Scottish. Overly ripe fruits, Six man. different kinds of malts. Musty, funky, overly ripe fruits. Oh yeah, this is way more like a lot of the Scottish new makes that I've smelled. Yeah. Uh, like I have one from King's Barn. Not smoky. Which is the distillery that I helped be a part of and Master of Malt new make. Okay. That they sent, which was just a malt new make. I'm not sure where they got it from, but it reminds me of that a little bit. Honestly, I've smelled stuff we've made, but this is a wide cut, man. You, you got tails in here. Well, yeah, and that's not smoky that we're, we're talking about. It's, it's very scotchy. It's the um, fruitier side of scotchy. And they went deep into those tails to get some of that funk and that character. It's and not uh, not deep into the faults of the tails, no, no, but no. deep into the tail cuts. The I think if you went deeper, you'd probably start getting into the wet dog. Yeah, and I think in a barrel, given enough time, this could be really rich and interesting. Yeah, they kept out of the wet dog, but I think they went deep in to get those You're going to need a long time. Flavors. You're going to need a long time for the barrel to handle this new make. Really? Yeah. Now, it, is that is that a thing? It, the deeper you go into the tails, the more time the barrel needs to? Yeah, the more time to get rid of that, that funk, yeah. the barrel needs more time to deal with it. Okay. Right, you make a narrower cut, then you get barrel impact, but your barrel's not trying to fix anything. Oh. You make a wider cut, you get way more flavor profile, but it takes right. longer for the barrel to convert things and... Okay. And, yeah. I mean, that is major oversimplification, but I am getting hints of that tail cut note now. Even more so on the taste. Yeah, like the cardboardy cut. Have you tasted it yet? More so on the taste, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, it still never... That is a really low cut. It still never goes quite wet dog, but to your point, like a wet cardboard. Yeah. I really want to know what that tastes like after at least four or five years yeah. in a barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, bet it'd be really... Oh, there's a chocolate, a lingering northwestern chocolate note. Why or like, you? remember that deer hammer we had? Oh, I love the deer hammer. Yeah, chocolate coffee. Oh, eventually it gets there. Yeah. I know what you're saying. You see what I mean? And it took like 60 seconds plus no, after I sipped. And you have to pull it out mm -hmm. of this cacophony of flavors. It's the aftertaste. It's a piece. It's not all the only thing on the aftertaste. And that's but, all I have left. No, I still have the cardboard note for sure. Well, but I get the dryness I get your point, of the cardboard like, note. Like that coffee, almost a nutty, chocolatey kind of character. That's in there. So they used a amber biscuit malt, caramel malt, a kilned chocolate malt, and a peated malt, mm -hmm. and then uh, your typical distiller's malt, uh, like a pale malt, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm well, gonna go back to the 23rd Street, but we'll that's see. our Rare Whiskey Friday, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm, also, I'm excited about the trajectory Australia is on. And by I the way, they're already making good stuff. I'm going to give you a, a glimpse of the future. Yes. We shot two videos before this one because I always save the Rare Whiskey Friday for the last one. Okay. And on one of them, I talked about something that was going to happen. Yeah. And then when we got to this video, I realized technically this is going to air first. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to hear me on like Monday or Tuesday talking about something that's about to happen and I'm going to be referring to this video. 
Here's the schedules. Yeah. Uh, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, but you steal your lever, sorry. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.